to improving generalizations from experiments, new methods. Uh, I'm Beth Tipton. I'm a professor at Teachers College, Columbia University. Um, today, myself and Larry Hedges uh, at Northwestern University will be talking to you about some practical things you can do uh, to improve generalizations from experiments you've already conducted or from studies that you're getting ready to conduct. First, we're going to start with uh, Larry, who's going to give a more formal introduction. I'd like to start by emphasizing that uh, generalization and relevance go hand in hand. Our objective is to give an account of one form of transparent and well-specified and logically defensible uh, generalization. I think what we're going to try to convince you uh, in the next uh, few hours is that by actually formalizing, by actually making precise some of the ideas that are used informally, uh, it has advantages for transparency and it has advantages for clear thinking. So you could ask the question, how comfortable would we be with generalizations to say uh, all the schools in Texas? What about Massachusetts? You know, the study was carried out in Texas. Uh, there's no way Texas could be a probability, Texas schools could be a probability sample of Massachusetts schools. Nonetheless, um, we might decide, it's not implausible that we could decide at some point that uh, uh, the results did have something to say about uh, education in Massachusetts. A policymaker or someone else trying to apply research usually doesn't know much about the composition of the study population. They may not even know um, everything they need to know or would like to know about the, about the composition of their inference population. The goal then is once you've stated what these variables are that you think that might matter, you need to find a way that you can select a sample that is just like a miniature of the population on those variables. Um, so in this case, in this particular case, the way I've defined the problem, we actually don't have two groups. So you'd think, well, propensity scores, but then we actually only have one group. We just have the population. So if I, if I choose nine strata, I can get 80% of the variation in my covariances between strata. Of the, those that are eligible to actually be in the study, I need to get five out of 395 of these schools to agree to be in the study. Whereas in stratum three, I need to get five out of 45. So there's sort of these schools that we already know, and then there's a whole bunch of schools that we don't know, that nobody's ever attempted to actually get involved in a study. The reasons that schools agree to be in studies differ from school to school. They're not all agreeing for exactly the same reason. This is just making your strategy different, like your marketing, like you're literally just marketing your study to schools and thinking about what motivates them. Um, but it's not affecting the random assignment, so it's not actually affecting the internal validity. To view this course, please visit the Virtual Research Learning Center, VRLC, today.